and I will travel where no man has dared to go. The accepted laws of physics break down. Break down. Break down. The boundary between the known universe and a place beyond the reach of science. All right, ahoy hoy AP Physics 2 students. So I want to talk about um, fluid dynamics and fluids in motion and in this case we're looking at a fluid and the key about this is it's the fluid that's moving it's not something moving through a fluid so whenever we're thinking about uh, a fluid moving we're gonna think about the volume flow rate that's our main idea our main equation and our volume flow rate is defined uh, it'll be used by the symbol Q and it's equal to volume over time and meters cubed uh, divided by seconds so the first thing to look at is what makes up a volume flow rate and what is a volume flow rate well as we're gonna find out in our first um, first problem it is the amount of fluid if you will uh, that can fill up a bucket uh, and the time it takes so it's actually just the amount of volume that's just moving right through there and how long it's gonna to take to actually move all that volume into a given area so once again it kinda of makes sense of its volume f uh, flow rate um, but the other way to look at it is that makes this equation so beautiful lovely and nice for us is its meters cubed divided by seconds so if any time we want to find a velocity so a given particle or part we just simply divide it by an area and then we'll have a velocity because it's meters cubed divided by seconds then divided by meters cubed or by meters squared and that gives us meters per second. Oh, it's so beautiful. So let's get started on the first equation. So if we go over question number three, we see that we have water flowing through a garden hose of a diameter. And in this case, I have a number that says 274 centimeters. So let's understand what's happening here. So I have a, um, a bucket that is filling up with water okay and we got a lot of water in here and it has a certain volume to it in this case they're in liters okay. so it's just flowing in here and we know that this actual bucket fills up over a certain amount of time so based on how it is filling up uh, how quickly it fills up we know the actual flux so let's go ahead and start solving this problem for what we have so our variables were given the first thing that we're given is that we know we have a diameter okay. so we have a diameter equal to and they say 274 or 200 and yeah, 2.74 centimeters is the number they gave me see him Okay, so I'm going to convert that right away because it's nice and it's easy and I want everything in meters. So that is 0.02274 meters. Meters. All right, then we have a, let's see, the volume of the bucket. Okay, so it says the volume of the bucket is... 25 um, yeah, 25 liters okay so I can convert that over and for this conversion like I said unless you took it in the AP exam I don't care you would have some sort of chart around you right away that tells you how to do the conversion so it's 0 .0, uh, 0.001 per cubic meter so I have a 0.02 Five meters cubed. Apparently, I'm getting some sort of South Dakota accent, but that's fine. And then my time, finally, in my case, uh, situation, is going to be equal to 1.5 minutes, which that's not a minute 50. That's 1.5, so that's going to equal 90 seconds. Okay. So right away, I can solve for. Um, I can solve for the uh, volume flow rate. So I have this uh, part right here. 
So I have a volume that's filling up the 0.025 cubic meters, and it's filling up the bucket in 90 seconds. So the volume, figure out my volume flow rate. So I should be, um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take my point. Oh, two, five, and divide it by 90 seconds. Man, writing on this thing, I'll tell you what, you see how that guy from Khan Academy, he's not only just smart, he's also artistically talented. So, all right, so I have this, and when I divide it out, I see that I get an answer that is 2.78 times 10 to the negative fourth cubic meters per second. And that's my volume flow rate right there. So now I know that's how quickly it's filling up. right? But I need to know the actual, they're asking me to calculate for the velocity. Okay. So if I want to go for the velocity, I can even see here, just based on units, right? I know that I have cubic meters and per second, and I need a velocity, and a velocity, of course, is equal to P is equal to ms. So I need to go ahead and I need to get rid of uh, meters squared. So if I can divide it out by meters squared, and as we all know, area is meters squared. So I'm going to take the area of this device, and as I see here, uh, my diameter they said is 0.0274. Okay, so there's two ways I can go about it. I can do the pi, um, and however you're comfortable, I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to do pi, and just use the direct diameter, and divide it by 4 because once again it's pi r squared and the radius right is once again uh, the diameter divided in half so uh, because I square it I divide it by 4 and it'll give me what I need. Um, so when I do that uh, I take my number and um, punch it in the calculator and I should get an actual area that is equal to 5.8 eight nine times ten to the negative fourth um, meters squared. So now I'm just going to take this value and I am simply going to just go ahead and divide them out. So in order to find my actual velocity, okay, let's say V and I notice that I have my flow rate right here. So I'm going to take my flow rate. So I'm going to take my uh, Q, my flow rate, and divide it by an area. And that will give me uh, a velocity. Because once again, meters per cubed uh, divided by that second. And I get 2.78 times 10 to the negative fourth. divided by the 5.89 to the negative fourth. And when I solve for that, I should get an answer. If you do it at home as well, you're, if you're playing along at home, you should get 0 0.471 meters per second. So, okay, now that's just part one. And of course, um, some genius has to go ahead and, you know, we got our nice equation and we got stuff flowing and he's got to come over and he's got to uh, put a nozzle on it. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for, thanks for doing that. Uh, so he puts a nozzle on it and that nozzle is one-third the size. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretty much uh, clear a good ma majority of this. Okay, so you can go about this... Um, Look, and like I said, you can go about this any way to actually figure out what you're doing. So just when you think about it, if it's one-third the actual diameter, you can just take that diameter and divide it by three. 
right? And go ahead and, and find area with the pi r squared, you know, divide diameter in half. You know, I'm not going to sit there and judge you. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and... Ah, look at that. Look at that. Look at my magic. It's... Mm -hmm. So, I can't get this back. Ah, there we are. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to think about how I can actually solve for this. So, I was told uh, in the problem that I've now had a nozzle attached that's one-third the diameter. So if it's one-third the diameter, the first thing I have to realize is this is a continuity equation, right? So I'm going to go by my continuity problem, and that just states that I have my area 1 and the velocity 1 will always be equal to right, the area of 2 and the velocity of 2. And that just means what comes in must come out. Uh, that's all it's really saying. It's nothing too complex, okay, as we talk about a fluid moving through. Or even in this case, if you think about slices of pepperoni, you know, as they're being pushed along um, through the tube. So now that I know that, I can rearrange this equation. I know I'm going to be solving for a V2, so I'm simply going to have A1, V1 is equal to uh, divided by A2 is equal to V2. Okay, so now that I have that, the um, next thing I want to think about is how do I go ahead and calculate the simplest way to calculate my diameter change. And here's what I can think of. Based on what they told me is the area, uh, the new one, is going to be one-third the, um, the actual diameter, I believe is what they say. Let me take a look. So it's one third the diameter. So I can, if I think about it logically, I can say, okay, so if I have comparison A2 over A1, okay, well, what does that really mean? So that means if I take, well, A2, I know in this case is going to be pi, right, times my diameter of 2 squared. And as we saw before, because it's squared, so I just cut it in half. I just cut divided by four. And then I know also that um, my area of one is simply going to be the same way, but just upside down, right? Because it's below the line. So d1 squared. All right. Um, so and forgive me, I shouldn't have written this equal sign here. Is this saying more of a multiplying factor? Okay. So when I go ahead and I do, um, you know, cross multiply them, a little dot there, uh, what I wind up with is, of course, my fours cancel each other out. Um, my pies cancel each other out. And what I'm left with is simply. Um, D2 over D1, and that's going to be squared, right? And I also know, that, as we said before, that it's one-third the diameter, right? So this is, uh, this bottom one is three times more. So I know that for every one of that diameter, this is going to be three times greater. So I look here, and I'm going to go ahead and square this, because I'm just substituting in, you know, the ratio. So uh, what I can understand then uh, to be simplified is that this is equal to 1 over 9, right? And now I can just punch it back in again and say that A2, okay, is really nothing more than just going to be um, A1, right, divided by 9. Okay, and once again, this is saying out and carrying the whole entire way over here, right? So from this original equation, all I did was just take, if we think about it again, I took A2, A1 is equal to 1 over 9, and I just simply took A1 and put it over here, and I have A1 over 9 for A2. So now I can come over to this equation right here. 
Let's see. Ah, A2, yar. All right. A2 is equal to... Uh, you have A1 div times V1 is equal to A2. So if I just go ahead and I multiply it by its reciprocal, I get A1, V1, um, times A2. Okay, but I don't want to use A2 anymore, so to get rid of that, I'm going to simply multiply it by its reciprocal, which gives me 9 over A1, because multiplying by a reciprocal is the same as dividing. Let me cross these out, and I see that really what I'm going to get is 9 times the velocity. Okay, so if I get 9 times the velocity, uh, I'm just going to take my velocity from earlier. If you remember, we calculated it to be uh, 0.471 meters per second. Okay, times 9, which in that case is going to give me a velocity of 4.471. Four meters per second, which is kind of crazy. I mean, you really you shrink down a diameter, you can see you get a you you get a pretty drastic change. So I am hoping this video helped. If you have any questions, remember you could have done all of this simply instead of doing all the hard algebra I did. If you go old school and you just go, I'm going to divide the diameter by three, cut it in half, and just start finding my area there. And then multiply that times, you know, and just use this original equation. That's cool. Because really, all it's said and done right now is just get it done. Right? I'm not going to judge anybody for the way they solve a problem. You know, if you, as long as you don't get lost and you get it right, good for you. So uh, I hope this helped. And I'll try and put a new one up very soon. All right, later.